Hey everyone, sorry we're a little bit late this morning. Um, Auckland traffic plus a bit of rain uh, plus an accidents on motorways means that everything grinds to a halt around here. But we're here now, um, here to talk to you about Bagration Axis Allies. Sorry, I had to look at the book title. <laughs> we have a formula. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so quick intro, if you don't know us, we're the Big Four of Late War. It's a self-titled name. Um, coming from the fact that we're each doing one of the big four nations, so uh, Germans, Soviets, Americans, and British, as part of the late war journey um, over the next couple of years, starting, what, two years ago? Yeah, about there now. Yeah, so when the D-Day Americans book came out, Victor kicked it off, and we're all sort of building our armies, hopefully alongside you guys. Um, and in between that, we do the odd detour for mm. stuff that excites us, and that happens to be, at the moment, Axis Allies. Yeah, yeah. we're all um, long time, well... Casey, maybe not. Long-time Axis Ally player? Nah. This is your first proper yeah. dive in, right? You've been providing opponents for the Axis Allies for a while. There we go. Yeah, because you've had your Hungarians before. Mm -hmm. On and off. Yep. yep. I've had Hungarians and mid-war Romanians. Wayne's had everything. I okay. know. Well, I've got Hungarians. I've not painted any Romanians or Finns. No. I've got. I brought figures at various times, but yeah. not actually done anything mm. with them. Yeah. So yeah. they're just sitting on your shelf of shame. Yes. Hey, there's no shame in having a shelf of... Future okay. painting. My plastic cubes of shame, which yeah. they stack nicely. <laughs> um, hopefully this morning we'll get to answer a few of your questions. We'll talk for a little bit. Hopefully we'll be uh, funny and insightful. Nah. We'll see. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we wait. Need, we need barstools. Barstools would be good. Standing is weird. weird. <laughs> We, we, we're not so young as we used to be, so the knees don't want to stand up. No. Um, so Wayne, kick us off. Tell us a little bit about the book, since I believe you wrote it. Yep, well, uh, basically, it, it, the title tells you what it does. It's, uh, it's, it's an Axis book set on the Eastern Front. It contains Finns, it contains Hungarians, and it contains Romanians. Uh, we've got infantry and armoured formations in each of those nations. Uh, we've got all their support, etc. Uh, and then... The command cards cover any formations we've left out of the actual book itself. I mean, we we couldn't we couldn't put every formation in the book because it would make it a very thick book. So we've done a few extras as uh, command cards. So things like um, the uh, Romanian normal infantry. So we've got the motorised infantry in the book, and you can do you can do the the rifle companies or the mountain rifle company etc. as in the command cards. Hungarians, the same thing. We, we put the rifle guys in. If you want to do the motorised rifles, there's a command card to do those. And the Finns, we've put the normal rifle guys and, and the light infantry, the Jaegers, are in the um, in the command cards. But other than that, we've got... It's pretty... covers just about everything you, you want to do for those guys. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the deal? So Axis allies. So they're all allies of the Germans and Italians, right? Yeah, well, so more, that's the, the extent of my more, more the Germans. Uh, yep. So basically, at various times in the early part of the war, uh, the Germans convinced these various nations to ally with them. But mainly, mainly the argument of of a kind of a anti-communist alliance. Basically, right. it's uh, they all had their grudges against uh, socialists taking over. So. To the enemy of my of, enemy is my friend. Yeah, yeah. That, that kind of thing. Because yeah. I don't think any of them were particularly mm. had a particularly close relations with the Germans. The Finns maybe a little bit because mm -hmm. the, um, the 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 basically the core of the Finnish army fought in World War One with the Germans as right. a as a light infantry battalion, and a lot of those went back to Finland to become like the core of the modern, modern mm -hmm. Finnish army. But um. I mean, the Hungarians were part of the Austrian Empire, so they in World War One they fought with the Austrians. The Romanians were actually on the Allied side during World War One, mm -hmm. but then they got smashed by the Germans at one point, so they kind of they didn't do too well in World War One. Yeah. Right. So we should kick off. Who? Do, what are we going to start with? Finns, Romanians, or Hungarians? Go in book order, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Well, the Finns. Finns are start off first, so yeah. Cool. So what do we want to talk about the Finns? I think Casey, you're actually building a Finnish force, right? Yep. yep. What are you building? Uh, yeah, that's the newest thing. I mean, if you if you're familiar with the Finns in mid war, yep. the thing they get as a new thing in late war is the is the Sturmies, which are stugs that they got off the Germans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, I came into work one day and Victor said, "Oh yeah, we're doing a detour. You're doing Finns." So again, it's all Victor's fault. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's the uh, enabler. 
Why did we pick the fins for you, Casey? Because I only had to pay 11 sterlings. There we go. Yep. See, we're thinking of you. Yeah. We're voluntolding you to do a project, but at least we're thinking of you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, one, of the, one of the cool things about the fins is they get all of the access to all the Soviet gear as well. So mm. everything I've been painting for uh, my uh, Soviet army, I can get to use to, as support and then just, you know, to bulk out the sterlings. Yeah, so it's an excuse because you actually haven't gotten around to painting any ISUs yet, have you? No, I haven't, and I need to paint one. Yes. Which means I need to paint five. Yeah. Which means I need to paint six. Well, (laughs) you might as well have a company if you're going to have one, I guess. So, yeah, it is a a good excuse to to get some other things done, right? Uh, Yeah, and actually, I've always thought that the um, uh, Stugs, Mm. you know, a a company of Stugs has always been, I think, quite a gamey choice. For the Finns or just in general? Just in general. Yeah. Um, And, you know, this is just... You know, a gamey choice, but cooler. Mm. They do seem to hit a sweet spot with seven armor and a reasonably yeah, seven good armor, gun. Seven armor, eleven anti tank. You know. Yep. As long as you take something, you know, you know, all your high anti tank options, you're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you fill it out with the ISU and some T thirty forty fives. Yep. Job done. And you're building the ones with the add on pieces, right? So you're actually yep. taking the German Stugs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the um, Evans actually designed the kit really well. You cut off a few bits of the plastic. Stuart, plus Stug. <laughs> Using Stuarts, you've done something wrong. <laughs> yeah, cut off a few bits of the plastic Stug um, and glue the extra bits on, and it looks great. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw you working on something out the back. We um, we've appropriated a desk out the back of the uh, the shop here as a little shared hobby space for a bit of lunchtime work. And Casey's ones are looking actually pretty cool. Yeah, I just need to actually finish them. Uh, you know, been a bit, haven't been quite as uh, fast as Victor. I've still got to work on my Soviet army for Panda Shrek. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not, he's not on Victor's team. He's not like Victor's worried about it. No. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. It's Chris that should be worried. Yeah, you're going to get our army painted for, <laughs> for Panda Shrek. Um, so you've never thought about the T26 company or the infantry? Infantry are cool. Yeah. The infantry yeah. are very, very cool. Um, T26s, I've always loved how they look, but quite difficult to use in light war. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same tank. It hasn't changed for the entire war. So, <laughs> um, as you know, one or two platoons would be cool. Yeah. But, um, I, I think as a standalone, you're better off and you're better off taking some of the bigger tanks. And actually by this time, the, the, um, Finns are actually replacing all combat losses of T26s with captured stuff anyway right so you know less of those around as the t35 t35 85 come through yeah. yeah it's probably worth mentioning there's a command card in the in the finished command card deck lets you feel panzer force now they got a delivery of panzer force from the germans but then they signed the armistice with the soviets before they actually got into combat right but then they used <laughs> the panzer force they got off the germans against the germans <laughs> <laughs> as they pushed them out of Lapland into right. into Norway, yeah. But, but but the push was, hey you, yeah, over there, get out of our country. <laughs> yeah, we're coming for you. There was a few. There was a bit of there was a bit of shooting and stuff, but it was generally the Finns just as happy as long as the Germans were moving away. <laughs> so it's what we'd call a little bit of argy bargy, but that was about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean they were they were obliged <laughs> under the armistice they signed with the Soviets to kick the Germans out, so they had to. Yeah. Yep. All right. What's next, Hungarians? Yeah. Yes. Like it. As I turn the pages of the book. So, we've got two Hungarian players here. Yes. Discuss. And soon to be three, probably. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I'll... One day. Well, no, I've got I've still got my Hungarians, but mm-hmm. I kind of, looking at the new plastic... Yeah, I don't want to do a battery of those. I've already yeah. got a battery painted in the old metal and resin models. Yeah. But the idea of doing the plastic ones is kind of cool. Isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's only 10 tanks. Wouldn't take long to paint... Well, relatively speaking, Vic, see, Victor's done his in green, yep. and uh, my original um, metal resin ones I did in green. But I thought what I'd do for the the plastic company is just do them in the three three color camo, yep. so they're just different <clears throat> from the other one. Yep. I yeah. suppose technically, if you're being uh, careful on your points, you can get two formations and a hundred points, right? I think so. You think so? You if you, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have much else, though, right? Uh no. But you can. So can command card. You can swap. One of the Zerni platoons for an infantry platoon, rifle platoon. So that's yep. 
So this, it can be slightly cheaper than Zerni's. So yep. you may bulk out one of the formations with that. And the other one could take pack 40s. That's right, yep. And you can so. also sub out one of your Zerini platoons for things like Hetzers, can't Hetzers you? and Stugs, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so the, for, the, for the Hetzer battery and the Stug battery, we've made those basically pure mm -hmm. because that's how they operate it. But in Budapest, all the assault guns were all put under command together so that right. they could have a mixture of whatever was available. So you can have Hetzers and that's pretty cool. Zerinis or Stugs, yeah. So heaps of pl flexibility game-wise and lots of painting options. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, because each of those platoons ends up looking quite different, especially with German supplied equipment versus Hungarian. You camo, no camo, you can do lots of different options. Mm. So, obviously, you've got the Zerinis, super cool. We're all slightly biased, but we love them. And yep. game wise, touch on the game for a second, they're pretty good game wise as well, right? Well, I mean, they, they, they don't have the same anti tank as a Stug, so they anti tank 10, right? But they've got a bit of firepower, the 2 plus firepower, and they're. Uh, um, They've got brutal. Yep. So that means they're good at this, especially good against soft targets like guns and yep. infantry. Yep. And they can fire as artillery. And they can fire as artillery as yep. well. Yes. Yep. And the red fire two while stationary. Yes, yeah, stationary red fire two Ooh. while moving. They they uh, um they they get the um slow firing slow firing rule when yep. moving. Yeah. Okay. So like halfway between a stew and a stug. Yeah. 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 So just back them up with some panthers for a bit of tank killing action. Exactly. Panthers. <laughs> Pack forties. Pack 40s, yeah. Uh, 88s, <laughs> if you really want to. So you, you've got some options. So other than the Hungarian, sorry, other than the Hungarians, other than the Zerinis, yes. just having a look at the book here, Panther Company, Tiger Company, Stugs, Tarans, Panzer Fours, Hetzes, Rifle Company. Mm -hmm. There's no bias here. It's not like we like them. <laughs> so, you know, few lists. And plus the command card formations with the Hussars. Yep. Uh, so as um, the uh, motorized rifles. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think I, might, I think I put paratroopers in. Paratroopers. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Do, doing a lot of death well, from above, you know. Well, no, just the, the, the towards the end of the war, the paratroopers because they were thin around doing raid. They did. They did. They fought in the uh, in the mid in the early war period. They mm -hmm. dropped into Yugoslavia. Right. Uh, uh, but. Um, they got formed into a division with a bunch of other units. Yeah, as a, one of the last Hungarian divisions formed, and they fought right. a lot in uh, Western Hungary. Yeah, right. There's yeah, the parachutes. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I did put them in. Cool. That's very cool. Heaps of cool options with them. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's not like Wayne's been working on them for ten years. No longer than ten. Oh, twelve. I was thinking, longer than twelve. Yeah. I, really? I remember when the Eastern Front came out for mid-war and went. Oh, all these lists are cool. That was probably 14 years ago. That's when I did my Romanians. Right. Yeah. I even still have the piece of paper somewhere with how to decal Romanian tanks that Phil wrote down for me. <laughs> somewhere. I think it's actually in the box with the army. Um, that's a good segue, actually. Romanians. Yeah, and then the last, the last uh, nation in the book is the Romanians. So, I've gone too far. Yeah. Romanians yeah. are interesting in, oh, in the fact that they... Um, um, a bit like the Finns, but the Finns, their, their fight against the Germans was... Uh, Kind of, they were trying. They weren't really engaging fully. They were just yeah. pushing them out. But the Romanians were uh, got defeated in August forty four by the Soviets, and then a new government in place, and they become allied to the Soviets. So they actually fought through the campaigns in Hungary and into into um, Slovakia and and the Czech Republic, or what's mm -hmm. now the Czech Republic. And um, so they they fought on the Soviet f with the Soviets right to the end of the war. Yeah. Mm. So they have a pretty cool rule, which is called Peasant Army, which I admittedly had to turn to the special rules page to get all the rules for it. Um, basically, you've got a chance when you buy your force that they'll have different levels of um, motivation and skill. So you basically roll the dice for, per platoon, and then you can just leave the dice or another marker next to your platoons to tell you which ones are... I wouldn't say veteran, bit well more better. Better, better, slightly better. I mean, the ratings go; they're actually on the card. So yeah. the example one in the rule, um, you go from uh, last stand being five to last stand being four. Uh, you go from uh, your trained rating going from four to three, and your assault rating going from uh, or staying at three. Yeah. So yeah. you get your trained, so you can do movement mm -hmm. orders better if you get the better resulted yeah. units and things. Yeah. So it's similar to the. Um Mid-war Italian 8 million bayonets. Yeah, yeah, yeah it works the same way, yeah. Yep. yep. So they've got, once again, plenty of cool options. They were not starved, but they were certainly the 
for uh, third cousins when it came to the Germans doling out equipment? Um, well, I mean, the, we'll go for, just to quickly go back to the Hungarians. Yep. The reason the Hungarians have the Panthers yep. is they were Panthers on the way to the um, Romanians that, <laughs> um, that then got given to the Hungarians after the Romanians got defeated and changed sides. Yeah. Right, yeah. so it's a bit of a... <laughs> Yoink, we'll be having those. Well, although I'm in the process of building two German style armor divisions, the Romanians. Yep. Um, that's why they had all the Panzer balls and Stugs. And yep. obviously, the Panthers were the next thing they were getting. Um, but and then the Soviets attacked, and it was, and then a lot of the, uh, some stayed fighting with the those vehicles, but the training guys who were training yep. one of the units um, actually grabbed a lot of the vehicles back and then oh, yeah. fought as a German unit with the. With the stuff that we're using to train them, so yeah, that's pretty cool. So we get R twos, which are I want to say thirty five Ts. R twos are yeah, thirty five Ts. Yeah, yeah. So they've been rolling around since thirty eight, thirty nine, and uh, <laughs> yes. now find themselves against IS twos and well, stuff like that. Well, they were designed in nineteen thirty five. There I we think. go. I assume <laughs> the numbers, if the numbers accurate. There you go. Um, Panzer IVs, Stugs, and Rifles. So I'm doing the Panzer IV company. So I think my list has 15 Panzer IVs, some Stugs for some variation, infantry aircraft, and a few, and some recon. So I, I saw something on Facebook yesterday which um, made me think that um, taking some Romanian allies from my Soviets would be quite dirty. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, the, Soviets, the Soviets did feed them in like cannon fodder sometimes. So, yeah. <laughs> Panzer four meat shield. Yeah. Panzer four meat shield. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 one of the problems that the uh, Romanian armoured guys had was that when they were fighting in uh, Hungary and in um, Austria, uh, they were um, if they if a vehicle became broken down or had a mechanical issue mm. or was slightly damaged and just needed repairs. The, the service would turn up and take it away. Yeah. And, and but they'd never get it back. <laughs> so they they had this like ever de, depleting supply of vehicles. So they they pushed a few captured German stuff back. So when they fa- captured more Panzer fours, they'd push yep. them back into action. And right. Yeah. So you do you, you do some really quite cool mixes of um of a unit with you know Romanian markings and then another unit with German markings. Yeah, German, you could have a, a badly painted red star on top of the cross or something. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds quite cool. Yeah. Um, I'm just having a quick look through the comments and I did notice Zerini's will be the new Semaventes from Midwar. I'm hoping that's a positive thing. I think it's a positive thing. Semaventes were pretty awesome in Midwar. I yeah. do love the Semavente. Yeah. So hopefully the hopefully the Zerini is the same. Bearing in mind, I guess, that you can take an allied platoon, yeah, right? As a, since it's a black box, you can yeah. throw one of those into your German forces if you want some yeah, I mean, cooler-looking stooks. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're cheap. They've got good enough anti-tank. They've got artillery. They're just all-around awesome. Yep. So that, how, how many points is it for a Zerini unit? 16 for three. 16 unit, yeah. That's just awesome. As an ambush unit, they're great as well. Mm. Mm. So why did none of you... Uh, why was no one painting Romanian R35's most meta-defining formation in history? Uh, we don't paint large armies. Well, <laughs> we try to paint more armies. As, but you'd be the most likely to paint a horde. Yeah, well, my, my World War Three Czechoslovakians are kind of mm. haughty at best. No, I... Um, I'd consider doing for the mid-war, but I'm not sure about late war. I really yeah. want to repaint my mid-war Romanians now we have plastics. Yeah. Um... I can paint better than I could. Well, I can paint 15 mil better than I could, you know, 14 years ago um, for a start. Well, and now it's all plastic, pretty much. Well, a lot of it's plastic. Well, that's actually another good segue to the fact that the mid war Hungarians, Romanians, and Finns are coming out as well at the True. same time. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you get your chance to do your Panzer Fours and Panzer Threes for Romanians. Yep. Yes, yeah, so that's my army upstairs is, was it R2s, Panzer Fours, and Panzer Threes? So, and I, I've had a lot of fun games with it, so I'd, it hasn't been out of the box in a couple of years, five, ten, some. No, but you should do something about that. I should, I should. Well, does anyone know if Flamescon is mid-war this year? Or late war? I can't remember. I actually don't know. Flamescon's a uh, sort of october tournament here in Auckland. It's mm. probably one of the bigger Flames of War events in our, in our gaming calendar. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw someone's asked, 
why no Bulgarians? Wayne, would just using the Romanians work for that? Because they had mostly Panzer fours. They have a lot of the stocks. same equipment. Yeah. Yeah, I looked at Bulgarians. I thought, oh, could we could we slip another nation in there? Because there's the options, the Bulgarians or the Slovakians. Um, both of them would acquire their own unique infantry ranges. Mm -hmm. um, and at the moment, we were because we were, the ranges were already already done for these three. Mm. Yeah. So it, it would have been, I think it might have been a bridge too far. <laughs> but if you were just but, wanting to do tanks, yeah. the Romanian Arky, T4 you, company, I think. Would yeah, be. use the Romanian list and then paint them up as Bulgarians, yeah. Because they had, I think they had Stugs as well. Yep, yeah, a few. Yeah. 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 Yep. Alrighty. So, so you guys are taking Hungarians to the Panzerik this year, aren't you? Yeah, so Panzerik is a team's tournament. A month from now, almost exactly. Yep. Um, it's 80 points each. Yeah, uh, it's, so, a, it's 160 points. And you can split it how you like. You can split it how you like, but minimum two formations. Yeah. So one per, per minimum of one formation per person. Yeah. yeah. I haven't actually looked at any of the rules for army building for Panzer Street, because Casey's figured out the army and is painting the army. Yeah. So I'm truly a useless passenger in this one. So... I mean, situation You're normal. You're a good sports score. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because me, me and Victor were going to do the same thing originally. We were going, Victor was just going to use his Americans and I was going to take whatever he gave me. <laughs> yep. Uh, but we decided to do Hungarian, so we're both doing painting for this. So Yeah, so I'll have a Zerini formation with Panthers and you'll have your Hussars. Hussars. So I'm using a command card to make a, a, cavalry, a cavalry squadron, basically. I had already had one platoon painted. Yep. So I'm just painting two more platoons. I've got to paint an extra pack 40, which I haven't done yet. And I think that's all I needed. I think I've got everything else already painted. I've, got, so I've got the little um, mountain guns painted. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I might even paint some limbers if I have time. Not that I've actually Oof. got a soft skin command card to use. <laughs> well, I've got a soft skin command, but I don't have enough points yeah, to actually points use it. <laughs> yeah. That completer person inside of you says, I want to Good paint. for putting out for you when you put your army on for, for, for painting points. Oh, yeah. Never use it in the game, but it's on the... It's, here we are. It's part of the army. question. Are you able to use Italians as allied support in mid-war and vice versa? Well, didn't surrender till... Oh, he's talking about Eastern Front. So oh. Hungarians were next to the Italians. Oh, right. I was thinking allied support as support for allies. No. Yeah. Allied. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. allied support for... There's too many Axis allies, allies, Axis. Yeah. In this. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember off the top of my head, but the Italians were basically put in between the Hungarians and Romanians well, that, to stop them fighting, wasn't it? That, <laughs> that might be worth considering uh, look, uh, for... Um, I don't know how, how, how the allied rules were worded for mid-war, is it? I don't even how... Because it's actually quite specific and explains what we have to actually say. I, I, oh. put, I put allied cards in... The I'd have to look at the middle ones yeah. to know. Oh, you've posed a difficult question, but that's yeah. good. We like it. That's what yeah. we can think on. Come back they, to there was, there was a little. They didn't really fight a lot together, but there was a bit where they got mixed up after the Soviets broke through their lines. So, yep. yeah, so there'd be occasions when they were fighting alongside, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because because the, the Serbians went through the gap between the Italians and the Romanians, didn't they? Uh, uh, yes, I think, and also, um, uh, and yeah, because did that? I can't remember if they hit the Hungarians or the or the Italians first. Yeah, because it was like Hungarians, Italians, Romanians, mm -hmm. uh, because they didn't want to put the Romanians next to the Hungarians because they don't get along. <laughs> History of bad blood. Uh, some arguing over Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> No, I suppose if you're going to have vampires, you want them on your side. So, yeah, that's fair. Um, you've seen the comment, uh, really interested in the use of uh, more and more command card options. So it's fun, actually. The command cards really give, I guess, you as a writer a lot of options that we just can't sort of add into the books necessarily because of time complexity, yeah, page count limitations, books, all that sort of stuff. Books are limited to a certain number of pages, and, and, and uh, you, can, you can often get... Well, it's using a lot of the same platoons, yep. or you can just modify it slightly and say plus or minus whatever points, mm -hmm. and then you can put, you know, you can give more options for the players. It gives, yep. it's a way of giving more variety and options. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty cool. So, have we got a favourite unit other than Zerunis? Because I figured three of us would pick Zerunis. Yep. Um, Sturmy. Sturmy. Yeah. Looks another different assault gun. <laughs> I like assault guns. Yeah, uh, it's cool. Their camo scheme is cool too. Um, camo scheme is cool. But yeah, the, the log armor upgrade kit 
just really they start to not look like a regular stug anymore. They're yeah, that's true. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll buck the trend and say T thirty four eighty five. What a surprise! <laughs> well, no, no, it, it, it's actually it's actually one of the interesting things about going back to the phones. It is, it is one of the inter- interesting things is you can take Soviet gear and see how good it is if driven right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, you, you, I mean, essentially, you could almost build you build basically a fields veteran Soviet army. Yeah. Out of it. Mm. Um, which is quite cool. Yep. The other interesting unit, you know, going back is the um, is the Finnish scout platoon. We got the uh, Panzerfaust rifle teams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where everyone has a Panzerfaust. You know, that's not me. Oh, I got five Panzerfaust shots. Yeah, yeah that's. No, that's not scout platoon's got that. Was it? Which one is no, it? No, it's the uh, it's a close defense. Close guys. defense. Yeah, yeah, tank, right, yeah, the tank hunter guys. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. they're just a platoon of guys designed to hunt tanks, so yeah, yeah. But yeah get, makes get, sense. <laughs> yeah, but, but you could easily, easily think, um, you know, T thirty, you know, field veteran T thirty four list backed up by some engineer sappers. Yeah, yeah, I've run into uh, Andrew's close defence teams a few times when playing under third edition, and did not enjoy that combination. No. Wayne, your like, favourite unit. Well, I like all the Hungarians because I've got all the Hungarians. <laughs> it must be the Hussar platoon, surely. Yeah, the Hussar platoon's pretty cool. I don't know how that's going to go. This is going to be an interesting experience. We're relying on you to win the <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll have to, I definitely will have to bring my infantry with me so I can dismount them as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. My, my IS-2s are quivering in fear at your Hussars. <laughs> I think technically they'll be my IS-2s, won't they? Give me the hammer unit, so I just drive for dunk, 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 dunk. Um, well, that, that, that means I can blame you when we lose. It's fair. There'll be a shop at the game hall. You just go shop while Casey plays. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what my, are you doing, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> so my question was loaded because I had my fav- I already had my favourite unit, of course. and it's the armoured rifle platoon for the Romanians. Yes, which is weird. I kind of guess, but I've always wanted to paint this platoon ever since I don't know in some book. Maybe it was in one of the compilations. Two five ones got given to the Romanians, and I thought, "Oh, that looks kind of cool." Half tracks in a in green, so not unusual German yellow. And looking at it, they got nine teams, mm. fourteen points, not cheap. You can give them Panzerfaust for a couple of points and a Panzer Shrek team. So I kind of figured there are a lot of big points investment, but they're reasonably tough. Hit on four plus, so they'll stick around. And you can dig them in, use them defensively to hold a flank. While the horde of Panzer IVs going to do the job, it's almost the equivalent of an American armored rifle too. Wow, nothing is ever that big. They're they're game breakingly large and impressive. I think that yeah, the armored the American American armored rifle platoon. The thing is, this firepower comes out of it. Yeah, it's not. It's a, if it was just a bunch of rifle rifle teams, that that'd be easy to deal with. But it's all mm. the other bits that come with it's them. The mortar and the other yeah. 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 Um, Evil Spock, throwing another question: What figure would you use to represent the Hungarian paras? I'm assuming. Uh, well, they had normal they had normal Hungarian uniforms underneath, uh, but they did have a camo smock, so you could probably get away with Forschmiega. Yeah, if you just stuck with the rifle arm guys, yeah. and they um and a lot and you don't have to worry about the machine gun too much as well because they they had their own unique machine gun, but later in forty four they were starting to get MG forty twos off the Germans, so the, right. so having an MG forty two is not a not a problem not either. A big drama. Yeah. Right. We've also got all the Huma Goering figures if you can get hold of them. Oh, that was a good Which have yeah. got a long smock that's not buttoned up for one. Yep, the old um And us wearing a normal helmet. Yep. I think we sold them yeah. as originally as Herman Goering and then as uh Le, 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 Le field, field, field Division yeah. or Luftwaffe yeah, Field yeah. Troops. Yeah, same so, figures, yeah. Yeah, you might find yeah. some of those on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> um no, here's, yeah. Have, we're not released them, then not, not no, available in the special order catalog? Not currently available. No, okay, no, okay, okay, sorry. So. Um great question here. And actually, I think we all have an opinion from Flame Flamethrower One Hundred Three. Which of the TACAMs are your guys' favourites? TACAMs actually get discussed surprisingly large yes. amount TAC-AM in this T- office. TACAM T sixty look awesome. The T sixty, I think, it's also got the slightly better gun. I'm, I mean, I'm going purely off looks. Yes. It's the T sixty. Yeah. It looks better. It looks yeah. better. But oh no, no, the T no T sixty doesn't. T sixty has the captured mm. Soviet field gun, just straight stuck in it, yep. while the um. The, the the R two yeah. one has the Rosita, which is the um, yes T sixty yeah T sixty is anti tank twelve yeah there we go that one's oh that's ten okay yeah yeah, yeah so actually oh that's yeah because that's just as this three that's right yes yeah 
So, so that's got the F-22 or whatever it is gun. So they've got two different Soviet gun, captured guns. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I suppose that makes sense. They look quite different. Yeah. Um, you know, easily T60, not just for, for stats, but just because it looks better. Yeah. I did think about trying to cram some into my force, but uh, was it 11 points for three? It was either, it was basically drop a platoon of Panzer Fours to do that. And I, I don't know, with painting the British that I've been doing as part of the late war project, I paint the entire company or squadron, except for Churchill's, but I'll get back to them. Um, and another, another point I should point out is, uh, before someone asks, the R2 has an anti-tank of 10, even though it's this 3.76mm field gun in the Soviet mm. Army has an anti-tank of 9. The reason for that is the Romanians manufactured their own ammunition. Mm. So, yeah. Fair enough. Better round, I'm guessing. Yeah, just a slightly better round. Yeah. Right. All right, what else we got? Uh, Hungarians give me an excuse to get Tiger and Panther models without feeling bad for it. Why would you feel bad? <laughs> I always love more models, so I'm not, yeah. I don't feel bad about any of them, really. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't feel bad about my Tigers and Panthers and my Soviet army either. Uh, if it's not Soviet, Casey's not interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any plans for a Defense of Italy V4 book? You could probably get away with booklets for it. We chat a lot about Italy in general here. Mm. Um, there's nothing on the on the schedule right no. now. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, Italy's, what, your favourite theatre, really? Yeah, it's my, well, for, for, for the Allies, it's my favourite theatre, because yeah. I've, I've, I've got a New Zealand rifle company I've painted. Um, I'd like to do a New Zealand tank company at some point. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, because uh, it could, a lot of the forces there can be fielded from the D-Day books, or, mm. et cetera, or... or Bagration and the D-Day books for German stuff. Yeah, actually, um, um, Fortress Europe is good for it as well. And for, and, and, and wars. Yeah, yeah, for the German tanks, like for Hermann Goering, you use the Pat Fortress Europe list so you can have your Panzer III. Yeah. That's quite a cool thing to touch on, actually. Yeah. Um, for Maybe for newer players, maybe veterans, I don't know. One of the things with the way that we've done the books through late war is we don't need to do a British rifle company 17 times. You know, it doesn't need to be in every single book in every single mm -hmm. place. You can take your D-Day British Rifle Company and just, if you want to use it in Italy, don't choose certain options. Or if you want to use them, just do whatever you want as well. Yeah. You can you can take lists from books and use them outside that theatre because in a lot of cases, you know, Panzer IV formation isn't going to change a lot in terms of its support. Just find the formation that you like that fits the army that you want to build and go for it. Mm. And what we were talking the other day about... Um we used to have the German Festungs companies, mm -hmm. which, you know, you could almost all use a beach defence. Yep. For as well, because it's just a defensive, slightly bad... Yeah, yeah, you're not, you're not constrained. Just because a list says that it's in the D-Day book doesn't mean that it's only appropriate on the 6th of June for a, for a few weeks. Use it, have fun, make it your own. Mm -hmm. Um... What stuff is coming to the New Zealand store? You'll have to come in and see. There you go. <laughs> but not right now, because we're live streaming. So if you could just wait a couple of days, that'd be good. Um, this is where? Be in stock soon. Yeah, we'll have, we've, we've just had a little shipment come in. We'll have it booked into the system probably tomorrow or, or Wednesday. So yeah. um, with more coming. Um, uh, here we go. Is there any assault gunners listed as having a stationary rate of fire of two? Is that a typo? No. They're awesome. Got... Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 yep, they are a stationary rate of yep. fire, too. So... An intentional typo. I heard, <laughs> I heard stationary and thought moving, and I went, what? Oh, no. <laughs> that would be awesome. No, um, no, it, it is very intentional. They are cool, but only from a fixed position, really. Not so great firing on the move. Yeah. That's what your Panthers and other support vehicles are for. Um, are the, re <laughs> da -da -da -da. the reason I asked was my new... Italian army. Remember there was late war Italians in Fortress Italy. So you're thinking back in version three days. Mm. Yeah, well, we'll see. Hopefully, just if you've got the old lists, you know what's likely to be in anything we do do. If we The one in Fortress yeah. Italy was the RSI one, so that was a pro-German one. Right. Um, yeah. Yep. So we never did, we had them as a PDF, but we never did anything for the allied Italians right. in a book. Yeah. Um, Brody, 
Here's a, going back a little bit. Can my German infantry be used as non-German troops and still look the part? I don't know. This might not be an, a popular comment to make. You know, we're surrounded by models that we kind of want to sell you. But if you want to use your German infantry and get started and use them as Hungarians, tell your opponent and use them. It's how you get into a new list. It's how you start playing it. And you never know. You might find after a few games that actually you want to paint something that looks a bit different to what you already have. Just then go in and pick up those bits later. Mm. Um, or you might find that there are certain support units for your infantry that you don't have in your German army. So start by picking up those. Um, trying to think of one off the top of my head. Really cool Romanian anti-tank gun. Uh, Antique rifle? No, the, M43. The, is it? The, the Rosita, yeah. Rosita. Rosita? Rosita? Super cool. Oh, yeah, for Romanians. Yes, yeah, yeah, super cool gun. Yep. That's the reason why I would take Romanians almost by itself. You're not going to have anything like that for your German force, so you pick up those and you add extra units, and before you know it, you actually have two armies, not one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, with my um, with my Finns, I want to paint the 11 Sturmies. Yep. And um, I'll play a few games just using my um, Soviet winter wash tanks. Yep. And then Victor told me that I have to paint some, some uh, Finnish T-345s as well at some point, so I'll yep. end up replacing those and then having a full finish. Yeah. But I'll just use other painted ones in the meantime because I've got them. Yeah, jumping into a new army can actually be a lot of painting. So if there's some way that you can open up a new army and ease your way in, I think that's great. Always start with tigers. Always start with tigers. <laughs> well, I would, but I don't have tigers for my Romanians. Oh, but you know, Hungarian. <laughs> All right. Uh... Oh, this is a tough question. Why are CV33s missing from the uh, Italian list? I hope to use them, like in V3, beside tanks that are 20 times bigger. I too had them. And actually, I remember, because they're about, they're smaller than my thumb. And I remember playing a game at Panzerschreck about five or six years ago, and they could park in like, literally someone's backyard. They were probably parked on someone's veggie patch behind the back door. They were quite cute. They, um... They're kind of early war, really. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think by that time, they're just so unbelievably rare that... Well, I think they're just by that... They've been replaced by the M13s. Right. Or, or, yeah, because we don't have the other one, the oh, M11. For the, for, the, for, the, um, for the Italians. No, for the... For the Hungarians? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, that, that's because they had three. Oh, they and, literally had three. And they were painted blue and they were used by the police. So... <laughs> I do seem to remember that mine are painted blue, and I wouldn't know that if it wasn't for one of you guys. Yes, the Hungarians me. had them. They had them early. They got them off the Italians, um, like at the start of the, right. like in nineteen late thirties. Right. And they had them as like before they started getting their other tanks, and then they got handed over to the uh, to John Darmery, the, the basically the police. Right. Yeah. And um and, and then they were used in Budapest because they were using all sorts of crap in Budapest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you get pulled over for a traffic stop, yeah. and you've got an L thirty three with. Twin machine guns, just in case you get a bit frisky. Yeah, more, yeah, I think more for internal security type <laughs> right, stuff. Right, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Not, not the usual sort of no, police no. work. Yeah. Okay. Um, last comment on the proxy is one of the reasons I love Battlefront miniatures. I love the fact that you guys are saying what's best for the customer, including thinking... thinking right, completely honest and amazing. Well, I guess we'll wear that. Sure. Yeah, sure. No, no, no I, well, that's the thing. I think... We'll pat ourselves on the back, or you can pat us on the back. Team Miracle, I will never lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, um, like the, end of, the four of us and you know, the other people here, we're gamers. You know, we play our games, we play lots of games, other games. Um, other games we can't mention here at this moment. Yeah. So, <laughs> because, we, because we, we are gamers, we know how gamers feel about things, or at least we like to think we do. Um, and gamers are on the whole, pretty smart upfront people and appreciate that. So we would like to be the company that mm. we would like to deal with, I guess, if that makes sense, as yeah. much as possible. I mean, there's commercial stuff and all that other things that go along with it, but... Mm, that's usually outside of us four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to speak for ourselves, but we try to think like the customer because we are at the same time. You know, yeah. we get interested in this game. We paint the armies. We, we want cool new stuff too. Yeah. We get excited about things like the Zerini. You know, when we see that in plastic, we're like, this is so cool! And genuinely want to make time to paint them. Actually, the, the Zerini is 50 in picture salt anyway. Yeah, <laughs> mostly, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, if, if we're being upfront and honest, was, we're looking at this book and 
they are, they are minor nations, you know, outside of the big four nations. Um, but we wanted a plastic new release with this book. Hmm. So we had to think, what would it be? And it was basically me going, zuri, 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 zuri. <laughs> <laughs> and it happened. So. so so, you need to buy lots of Zurinis so that... I get to do that again, because yeah. otherwise they'll never listen to me again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll get one plastic that you get to push for. <laughs> yeah. And don't start messaging me on Facebook asking for tanks to be made in plastic. <laughs> that might have been my only one ever. Yeah, Rick has had his turn. Yeah. Yeah. E- yep. e- email Chris and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um What miniatures would you guys suggest for using for Hungarian assault gun riflemen? A mix of Hungarian and German big light? Yep, that'd be cool. Um, assault gun riflemen? Ah, uh, like the dismounted assault gun oh, crews. Oh, yes. With the uh, command card. Oh, right, yes, because they... Um, yeah. They would have had regular infantry uniforms, a lot of those. Yeah. Um, Overalls were quite often. Yeah, still wearing, be fighting in they, their crew. I, I suspect if they were being deployed as infantry, they probably would have just had the normal uniform on. Because overalls would have yep. been for being as a tank crewman in a tank. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be painting a platoon. I'm going to try to get the old German dismounted figures. Yep. Maybe do a few head swaps. But that'll give me some guys in overalls. Yep. Um, yeah. Never real mix. They also wore uh, um, Italian tank gear as well, which was like a leather jacket. Yep. And uh, the Italian style padded helmet with the neck flappy thing. Yep. Yeah, that's so, how. That's the tank commander figure you get. Is this guy? Yeah. Yeah, he's got that style helmet. That's the one you get with the Zerini kit. Yep. And I've sprinkled in some old metal Italian tank crew figures to mm. have some so variation. If, you, if you've got an old Italian army and you had a bunch of spare dismounted crew lying around. That they they might, could be usable as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Go buy a Zerni army to use with your Italian crewmen that you got lying around. <laughs> <laughs> um, got a question. Technically, we can't answer it, but we'll give it. We'll at least read it out. Are you guys going to update your articles about unofficial units with late war stuff? So I'm thinking we're talking community cards, maybe. Oh, and no, I might, might be talking the old PDFs. So right. the version three PDFs that used to be free. Right. That if you do a search, you can still find on the website often. Yep. yep. Um, but they're not displayed because we don't have that section on the website right. anymore. Um, don't know is the short answer yeah. right now. I keep uh, agitating PD every now and again to see if we can do that again. <laughs> yeah. We have been yeah. thinking about doing web lists again. Yeah. yeah. It's on our radar. Yeah. yeah. More thinking required. Mm. Yeah. We're always keen for lists. You know, that's yeah. lists is what inspires us. You know, something strange, something interesting. Or a model. Those are, those are the things that make the four of us, I think, want to build a list, build an army. Because that would be, a, I mean, when people are talking about Italy, mm. that would be a great way do of doing that. the weirder Italy list. You have, like, you go through, you do an article about saying how, how to feel things from different books. Right. And then you can do a couple of free lists that cover the odd things that aren't mm. covered by any of our books. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, take a rifle company from B-Day British. Mm. Here's how you make it Indians or any other or Commonwealth troop. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I think I think that's kind of kind of cool actually. Yeah. Um, what else do we want to talk about? I think we're sure. Um, well, I suppose we can tease in two weeks here on Twitch. Uh, oh yes. Casey and I are hoping to play a live battle. So that would be my Zerini's Panthers and Storks versus Casey's Soviet stuff. Yep. Some green things. White, 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 white winter washed things. Yes, true. Mm. And also on Casey's new table. Yep. Yeah. That's reason alone to tune in. It's a cool table. Yeah. So just, yeah I'm just spending lunch time fix, uh, finishing that. Because so. you've, built, you've built basically an entire winter table. Winter table, six by four, which is not modular as such, but is sort of modu- modular for packing purposes. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, if you go back to having the Instagram, there's a whole bunch of photos of the. Work in progress is there. And actually, if you look in, um, well, any of the books with a winter section oh, yeah. recently, you'll probably find pictures of them too. Yep. Pictures of parts of the table being used. Yep. I promise I won't take all IS2s against your Zeranese. Please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Make no promises. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got three Panthers, so you can take three IS2s. <laughs> the list negotiations <laughs> begin. Oh, no. I, I think well, you need to paint a pair of 88s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Well, but that's the thing, though. I wouldn't do, wouldn't that do, do that anyway because it'd be no fun. Yeah. 
My winning un- German allied unit, eh? Four pack 43s. <laughs> <laughs> winning is a kind of fun all in its own, though. In case he already knows that. Yeah. Oh, you have Panthers. Yes. Yeah. They'll deal with them. Yep. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, you know, I don't know if you can deal with 10 of them or three Panthers. It's fine. <laughs> you just dance around in front of them, the Panthers, <laughs> and then drive around the sides of the Zuri. Oh, they're still, they're still eight side. The eight side. Eight side. Yeah. yeah, that's not good. No, no, no. We'll, we'll audit Casey's list maybe before <laughs> before the game to make sure that it's actually fun. <laughs> no, no, no. We've downgraded them all to KVs. <laughs> no, no, we've already come up with some lists. So. Yeah, you've got some lists? Okay. Yeah, we've got a list in Victor's had a look at here. It doesn't look as scary as I thought. <laughs> it could be worse, yeah. Yeah. So stay tuned for that one then in a couple of weeks' time. Yep. Um, so if you haven't been watching, you can check out the Big Four website, obviously. That's where we've been putting our progress from the last couple of years. And the Instagram uh, Big Four account as well. That's where you can see pictures of my garage door, um, <laughs> my painting table in the garage, which now that it's winter, wow. Yeah, it is officially winter, right? Must be summer yeah, for you guys. It probably. It. It's winter, yeah, because yeah, yeah, the shortest day is on the 21st. There we go. So now that it's officially winter, the uh, little heater now comes out, sits literally here while I'm painting in the in the tin shed garage. So have a have a tune into the Instagram page anyway. You you might see something interesting. Occasionally we take photos of our painting desks and go, oh crap, that shouldn't be in the photo. Slide, take photo. Something from the future. Yeah. Yeah, I. I I Easy almost, act. <laughs> I almost put something up that I shouldn't have two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've actually, I, w- I would have, I should have brought them out, but I've, I've actually now finished my Panzer fours and my Stugs for my Romanians. Cool. We'll take photos of them this week. Yep. So we'll get photos of them up before Thursday for the web update, um, which then I've got left to paint my AB armored cars, my two five ones, and my infantry. Now, unfortunately, my infantry are probably going to be late because I don't have enough, and it's a little bit hard to get them at the moment down here. Mm. So there's some. What are, you, what are you missing? I need a uh, like two or three stands of infantry, I think. Oh, Romanian and, infantry. Yeah, Romanian infantry. Oh, I might have some at home. There we go. Yeah. That's why you game with friends, because then they've got stuff you can steal. You see Wayne, he's got everything. He's got everything, yeah. I've, I've got my office stash, but there's nothing in the office. But um, I was actually, I had a moment. I'll, I'll share it with the wider community. Always be careful when you're base coding your figures. Uh, I don't know about you guys, I use a big stick. So sort of a three foot, four foot long stick with blue tack on it. Mm. And I put the models on it. That way you can spray them. You can rotate the stick. Mm-hmm. You can turn the stick around and spray the other direction. So I finished my commanders on, sorry, my tanks on Friday night, Saturday morning. I was doing my spraying. And I've done this hundreds, if not thousands of times. And I'm going to move my hand down to the other end of the stick. And I drop the stick. So all my 251s and armoured cars are on the concrete outside the garage and I'm standing there going, breathe, breathe. <laughs> it's a walk away, calm it's down a, moment. They're attracting dust and grit while oh, they're on the ground. Well. Dust and grit was the least I was wondering because I watched the stick just go, bonk, bounce, 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 so bounce. Hang, hang, so, so you let go to go get the other end? No, no, I, I, you know, you've got a can in one hand, I've got a way of doing it and it just slipped. First time, I think, maybe second time, but... Um, so I took a breath for a minute, went over, picked up the stick, went, ah, plastic 251s, all in one piece, no damage, that's a win. So other than a few uh, wheels to glue back on and some turrets and a little bit of fixing. If they were resin ones, they may have broken. Well, luckily it was just for the resin ones, it was just the wheels that popped off. Oh, okay. So yeah. could have been worse, but that was meant to be my painting for yesterday. But after that, I decided not to paint. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to take shaky hand syndrome. I got I got one more half half troop of cavalry to do, That's which okay. I have uh, which I think I've got highlighting on the uh, red leather. I've got to paint the horse blanket, and then paint all the black bits. Yep. And the metal bits, and then paint the socks on whatever horses I'm going to give socks to. You need them shoes as well, like boots. Well, I got I got to paint the hooves as well. Yeah. <laughs> horse joke. And then, and then I've got a pack 40 and yep. my squadron commander to paint. Yep. Yeah, and that's it. Not bad. Hey, I'm just working on the German equipment now. The three Panthers, three Stugs, five Hetzes. So that's not all for one list. That just yep. gives me options. Because that Zerini formation is so varied, you can mm-hmm. plug in things. And then 
yeah, down the road, a dismounted assault gun crew yep. rifle platoon. I'm just reading from Potatoes. No, it wasn't pot Potatoes. It was... Oh, well, I really should have my glasses now that I'm becoming an old man. Jay McCraggs. Could be worse. I know of people that picked up black spray instead of varnish. I've come close. I've never... I've never done it, but I have, you know, picked up the can, shaken it, and I don't know about you guys, you do the kind of that test spray to make sure that it's working, a bit of a spray down on the wood at the end, or just, yeah. and gone, whoa, wrong colour, <laughs> put that down. Yeah. I use my airbrush, so, um, so if I've got to the point where I've put the paint in the cup and started painting, <laughs> I'm clearly not paying attention. <laughs> no, no, that's true. Um, all right, we'll get the last couple of questions, maybe. And then we'll yeah, we'll right we'll there. shut it down. Yep. Um, haven't seen anything about the mid-war Romanians. Any information on them? Um, coming soon. Um, so the books are coming out. The mid-war booklets are coming out one at a time. The Romanians are the last one of the three. From I mean, oh, we haven't even got a copy of those yet. I don't think. No, we don't. Mm. No. Uh, We've got Finns. Trying to think. We got the finished book. The <laughs> Romanians <laughs> and Hungarians might be in the sea freight that just arrived. Ah, right. I have to check. Yeah. Um. I think if you've played V3 Romanians, I don't think you're going to be surprised by what you're going to get in the mid-war booklet. Um, but stay tuned, there will be stuff coming out about them. Um, anything for wild cards, mid-war monsters, something similar. There's a topic we talk about a heck of a lot around the office. Um, stuff is happening with wild cards. Can't say any more than that right now. Um... Sorry, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay, stay tuned, yeah. Soon. 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 Uh, um, yes, plastic. Yeah, plastic more forgiving than resin. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting older, but I drop out tanks way more than I used to, especially when I'm painting. It's oh. nice to see them bounce and not... Though I do remember, here's a short story for you. Uh, 15 years ago, maybe more, at a tournament... Uh, one of the players dropped his M3 half track, and Evan, who's our lead sculptor, was there. And the guy came over and said, oh, Have you got any super glue? I just need to fix my half track. Evan looked at it, said, Oh, well, yeah, I'll glue that in for you. Your fender's all broken off. Give me a second. Grab some milli putt out of his bag, mixes up the milli putt, oh, I remember that. sculpts yeah. the guy a new mud guard for his, for his M3 half track. He goes, There you go. <laughs> That was kind of cool, but unfortunately we don't have a professional sculptor on tap. We can't send Evan around to every tournament I, as a repair guy? I don't think any, every tournament wants him as a repair guy. <laughs> oh, if you're watching, Evan. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, are decals included in the Resini box? Sorry, no. Um, nope. You've got a Axis Allies decal pack, though, which gives you a, a decals covers for all, all of them. Yeah, yeah, covers all three. Um, including the cool crosses on the back, yep. which actually, that's one of the reasons I also like Zoranis, because the cool crosses mm -hmm. on the backs of the engine decks. Uh, V4 Togs, yes, come on, who wouldn't? Ryan's nodding his head behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we all want it. Oh, see, Evan is in the chat. <laughs> oh, there you go. Get back to work. <laughs> yeah, we're working, Evan, you should be too. Um, you could be sculpting and watching he could be. He better be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for tuning in, everyone. It's been a really long time, it feels like, since we've kind of done a live stream. Yeah. It's kind of... Um, it was a lot of... We had a lot of fun when we were doing them sort of regularly, semi-regularly. the lockdown. Yeah, lockdowns last mm. year. Um, but then we have to come back and do pesky work. So it's yeah. Like we haven't managed to convince anyone that doing this once a month for two hours is, a, is, is good work. Um, <laughs> Sorry if you've had to deal with any other background noise in the background. Um, yeah. We'd turn the camera around, but we've got, we're actually, the building where we are now is in the middle of a sort of light industrial zone. So we have trucks constantly going up and down the road, which is, I don't know, 25, 30 feet behind the camera. Mm. So that's just life though. And it's raining. And it's raining, which makes it worse. Um, I say tune in, or like Victor said, tune in yeah. in two weeks. Yeah, um, so we're doing Monday, eh, Casey? I can't remember. We, we've got it in the schedule somewhere. We'll probably do it Monday two weeks from now. Yeah. Yeah, about the same time. Hopefully earlier if traffic isn't awful, but keep an yep. eye out. Well, we'll let you know. Yep. Um, we'll have these two guys playing. Uh, you guys should come around for banter. Yeah, we'll do some colour commentary. Yep. When, well, well, when, when you can sit be... on, like, tall stalls and then just, like... Yeah, with microphones. 
comment oh. like it's cricket or something. I don't <laughs> think anyone wants cricket commentary right now. Oh, cricket commentary is the best. No. I think, I think, well, Chris is going to be running the tech side, and yeah, we'll see. I think yep. Wayne can be a rules wary. Yeah, <laughs> you know you, you can do that. Do that. <laughs> um, tune in. We'll be back hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, all stay safe. Get some painting done. If you haven't, pick up a copy of Axis Allies and two boxes of Zoranis. You won't go wrong. Three. 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 Sorry. Three? Yeah, yeah, yeah run two formations. Favourite yeah. nations card right, two pack and uh, command card pack as well. There we go. <laughs> Shameless plug. You know, we're paid to do it. Um, the more of these you buy, the more likely people up top will listen to Victor when he suggests new plastic kits. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. So if you could just... Okay, closing question. Last question. If you could suggest one plastic of your choice... What would it be? Let's incentivise them to get what you'd pick next. Pans 4J. All right. about, about to say the same thing. Oh. So there you go. If you want to see a Panzer 4J in plastic, like, comment, subscribe, share, <laughs> all the usual stuff, but go out and buy three boxes of Zerunis. There we go. Sure, yeah. We don't guarantee it, but we'll, we'll do our best. There we go. Cool. Stay safe, everyone. We'll see you next time.